Hope you're ready to watch small children cause a whole lot of chaos. Yes, we're talking about infants and looking at everything about them relating to the base game. Firstly, know that the infant life state lasts for five days and that they only have access to their relationships, symbology and needs panels, as well as their inventories, of course. And if you were thinking that meant no skills, then you would be right. But keep in mind that while infants can't gain skills, they'll still be able to interact and play with many of the toys that toddlers and children make use of. Anecdotally, I found infants' needs to feel like they would rise and fall faster than other life states, so expect them to be an emotional roller coaster. Infants will often receive strongly negative sad or angry moodlets if one or more of their needs are low, meaning that half the battle with infants is simply keeping their needs high. You'll want to regularly change your infant's diapers after they use them to relieve their bladder. And note that if you have the laundry day stuff pack and washing equipment on your lot, then you can change from disposable to cloth diapers. Provided you have a hamper on your lot, the diapers will automatically go into it. But know that this does mean that you'll be doing laundry for all your clothes, which is more work in its own way. Meanwhile, disposable diapers will leave a dirty diaper on the floor that you'll need to throw away. A little annoyingly, change tables come with growing together and not the base game. And know that if you ignore your infant's diaper for too long, they'll get a sad moodlet due to diaper rash. You know, no one wants diaper rash. If you forget to change a diaper for a while and your infants keep using the same one repeatedly, then your infant's hygiene need will plummet. And when this happens, you'll need to bathe them in a bathtub. Low-key, very cute. For their fun need, simply having a few toys around for them to play with will take care of this, but note that as well as playing with many of the usual toddler and child toys, Infants can also make a mess by playing in low-lying household objects, such as bins, counters, dresses, and bookshelves. And yes, this can create quite the mess. Interacting with other sims, including other infants, will increase their attention need. And we will talk more about attention shortly. When it comes to hunger, bottle or breastfeeding will take care of an infant's hunger need. Note though that you can choose a feeding preference which will then be the option that appears by default when clicking on that infant. Infants can also start getting acquainted with solids. Using a high chair, you can help infants to explore foods with a large range of different options to try. After trying a food, they will either love, like, or dislike it and they'll generally receive a positive moodlet if they love or like a food based on receiving attention, with an extra happy moodlet if they end up eating a food that they loved. Eating a disliked food can see them end up with a negative moodlet because they've understandably been betrayed. I know, the drama of it all. And sometimes infants will reject eating foods they dislike. Also, eating the same food in a row can see infants wind up with a sad moodlet because they crave variety. Sometimes infants can be unsure about foods they try, and in this instance, they'll need to eat the food again to figure out if it's something they love, like, or dislike. Honestly, once you find a couple of foods that your infant loves, you can just rotate between them. Overall, this can be quite a fun way to mix up mealtimes, and of course, avoiding having your infant taken away for having critically low hunger for too long. Nobody got time for that. Finally, we have the energy need and generally you'll want to be popping your infants to sleep in a crib. They might not go to sleep right away though, and so you can find yourself needing to soothe or read your toddlers a bedtime story. It can also be adorable to click on a crib when your infant sim is sleeping and choose to give them a kiss goodnight. Now for 100 simoleons, you can also upgrade cribs with either a bird or solar system mobile and these can be activated to sing lullabies to your infant and help them get a good night's rest as well. Also keep in mind that infants need regular sleep, and if they go too long without some shut-eye, they will experience a negative moodlet. There's also a travel crib that comes with the base game, which is hugely helpful for if you're on the go, as it can fit into your sim's inventory and be whipped out pretty much anywhere. And also know that once your infants age up to a toddler, if your sim is level 2 handiness, then for 50 simoleons, you can convert a crib to a toddler bed, but this cannot be done to the travel crib. Now, two important things to note is that generally when caring for infants, 
sometimes I found things to be a little clunky. And in these moments, I felt like actioning things from the infant's perspective could make things run much smoother. For example, instead of having my adult sim click on a high chair to help an infant explore food, I would play as the infant and click on the high chair to select explore food with the adult sim. The second handy thing to know is that adults can use the check infant interaction. And this will have them see what the infant needs before automatically starting to help them based on their needs and situation. Utilizing this interaction can make caring for your infants quite a bit easier. When caring for your infants, you'll also want to keep in mind where they can and cannot go. While they can crawl up small platforms, infants are unable to navigate stairs without being brought up or down them by an adult. You can also use fences to create a sort of playpen for infants. Simply build a fenced off area of which the safety zone baby fence and gates are good options. And then on the gate, select lock four and then apply baby proofing, which will make it so that infants and toddlers can't get in or out without some help from sims who are at least as old as a teenager. One thing that's very cute is that infants and toddlers can interact with each other. While infants will mainly be able to watch, smile and coo at toddlers, toddlers are also able to babble to and entertain infants. And if you have the Cats and Dogs expansion pack, then infants can pet and interact with cats and dogs as well, and they can even go to sleep together. Honestly, some of these interactions are just making my heart melt and they are too adorable. I also found that infants who are interacted with by others will often gain a positive sentiment whereby they'll become fascinated by the sim who's engaging with them. And this can lead to quite a lot of positive moodlets for your very small sim. If you have the parenthood game pack, then many interactions that care for infants will train your sim's parenting skill up as well. Now giving infants love, attention and care is important, as when infants age up to a toddler, they can get one of three traits being top-notch infant, happy infant, or unhappy infant. I've taken this next snippet of information from The Sims Team's livestream, whereby they mentioned that if infants are left crying or with low needs, they'll feel neglected. But if Sims care for and spend time with infants, then their attachment will grow. And the moodlets your infants are experiencing is a good way to gauge how your infants are going. Note that if infants have higher or healthier attachment, then they also won't cry as much when they're left neglected for a little while. Whereas neglected infants can feel extra sad. The trait that infants receive upon aging up to a toddler is based on how well they were cared for and whether or not they formed a healthy attachment as a baby and infant. And while it's hard to know exactly how you're going, from my experience, if you generally try and care for your infant's needs, while also giving them a bit of extra attention and love, then you will likely come out with the happy or top-notch infant trait. Now, if you neglect your infant and they grow up with very low attachment, then they'll receive the unhappy infant trait. In all honesty, I struggled to see the impact of this trait through gameplay outside of them potentially having a slightly harder time socializing with other sims but that could have just been by chance. And overall, I wouldn't say this is a hugely disruptive trait. If your sim has a healthy attachment, then they will get the happy infant trait. And while I didn't notice any huge perks from playing with this trait, its description suggests that it will be easier to build positive relationships with others. Finally, the top notch infant trait is the best trait you can get and it'll often leave your sim with a happy moodlet from time to time as they go through life, which can be quite helpful. Now, not only are there reward traits, but there are also six different traits that infants can have, and every infant will temporarily have one of these throughout their infant life stage. From my experience, these aren't massively impactful, but they will change up to a small extent the way that your infant operates. Infants with the calm trait aren't ones to solo explore, but they will be less likely to cry or become angry. They also don't tire from activities as easily as other infants. 
Infants with the cautious trait love the familiar and dislike the unfamiliar. For instance, they can get happy moodlets when hanging out in familiar spaces such as their home or with familiar people. But on the flip side, heading out to random community lots or spending time with new sims will often make them sad. Cautious infants will also be unsure about the foods they try more often, meaning that they'll often have to try them repeatedly to work out whether they dislike, like or love them. Intense infants are difficult to calm when they are in a bad mood, but they are also easily entertained and they'll often gain a positive, playful moodlet when playing with toys. Sensitive infants will get a diaper rash more often, meaning more frequent diaper changes to avoid sad moodlets. They'll generally dislike more foods than other infants as well, but on the positive side, if they're soothed, then they'll sleep very easily. Sunny sims love engaging with other sims, but they will require more frequent social attention than other infants due to their attention need dropping at a slightly faster rate. Finally, we have wiggly infants, who will love to move about and play, and they'll often get a playful moodlet to complement this part of their personality. On the flip side, they'll struggle with sleeping and paying attention more than other infants. And with that, we're at the end. That's a guide to infants in the base game. If you enjoyed or found this helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. See you later.